Welcome. Yeah, so in a different video, I provided you a sophisticated example in Fermat's little theorem. And in this video, we're going to prove our favorite little theorem. Yeah? Okay, cool. Now, let's begin by stating Fermat's little theorem, which says that a to the power p minus 1 has to be congruent to 1 mod p, where p is a prime, a is a natural number, and p doesn't divide a. Yeah? Okay, that's this. So if p is a prime, uh, a is a natural number, and p doesn't divide a, then a to the power p minus 1 has to be congruent to 1 mod p. Now, as I just said, I've provided you an example, but let's look at a little example here. Yeah? Appropriately, perhaps. So let's take p to be 5 and a to be 2. Clearly, um, 5 is a prime and 5 doesn't divide 2, so Fermat's little theorem applies, which is that 2 to the power 5 minus 1 has to be congruent to 1 mod 5. And it is, right? Okay. Cool. Now, um, let's begin the proof. Okay, so to start, notice that in the mod p world, these are all the numbers that exist. These are all the numbers mod p. Um, so that's to say that every number, uh, when divided by p, has to leave a remainder of 0, 1, 2, 3, or p minus 1. And of course, those numbers that leave a remainder of 0 are multiples of p right okay now any number a has to be one of these numbers and we call these guys actually congruence classes so these are all the congruence classes mod p and so any number has to be in one of the congruence classes here mod p yeah that is any number must fall in one of these buckets yeah okay so any random a has to be one of these guys okay now then we must avoid an A that is in the congruence class of 0 mod P because we said that P doesn't divide A. And so if uh, P divides A, then A is going to be 0 uh, mod P. And so we need to get rid of this uh, congruence class of 0 mod P in our consideration. So that's to say, let's look at uh, only those numbers that are congruent to 1, 2, 3, all the way to P minus 1. Uh, mod p and so let's pick a to be uh, one of these guys all right now observe this important thing uh, which is that uh, if we take mod 5 then first of all the numbers we're considering then mod 5 would be 1 2 3 and 4 right now what happens if we multiply these numbers by some random number um, a equaling 8 yeah and, of course, when I say random number, I'm talking about a natural number, but I qualified that at the start, right? Okay. So, uh, if we multiply uh, all the numbers uh, mod 5 by 8, and remember we've left out 0, right? Then what we get is uh, this, which is we get 8 times 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's going to get us these guys, right? Now, these guys, if we reduce them mod 5, what do they look like? They look like this here, right? 8 is congruent to 3 mod 5. So 8 is the same as 3 mod 5. It's the same number as 3 mod 5, right? And so 8 is in the congruence class of 3. 16 is in the congruence class of 1, and so on. So basically, scaling these guys, uh, all that does is it gives us a rearrangement of them um, right here. Uh, but it doesn't it doesn't do anything else. It just rearranges these same numbers. And uh, also, it keeps them unique, right? Like there are no repeats here. Uh, just like how these guys are distinct, these guys are distinct also, and they're all of them. All of these guys are represented here. Yeah? Okay, cool. Now we're gonna move then by analogy. Uh, that is, uh, if we take uh, mod p, all the numbers uh, that are, uh, can grow into 1, 2, 3, uh, and then all the way to p minus 1 mod p. So all the numbers that we're considering mod p. So the only thing we're leaving out again is those that are can grow into 0 mod p for reasons I've already explained. But yeah, if we take these guys and multiply them by a, then what we're saying is we'll just get a rearrangement of this, which is that we're going to get this here. Maybe not in this order, but it doesn't matter. We'll still have uh, all of these guys in this list, right? That's very important. Also, this is just a different way of writing uh, mod p. So I have it here, 
this hair is the same thing as this hair and it's not something I made up. It's like a standard abbreviation. Yeah? Okay, okay, okay. So then uh, look at this. So uh, if we take a, 2a, 3a, uh, all the way to p minus 1 times a, then uh, this product is going to be the same as, it's going to be congruent to, that's what I mean by the same as, it's, it's going to be the same as um, 1 times 2 times 3 times p minus 1 uh, mod p. So this here mod p is going to be the same as this here mod p, right? And that is from what I said about how scaling is just a rearrangement of these guys, right? Okay, 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 cool. So, so if we look at this left-hand side, right, how many a's do we have in a product? We have p minus 1 a's being multiplied. So this here is a to the power p minus 1 times p minus 1 factorial. So the latter, the p minus 1 factorial, is from like 2 times 3 times p all the way to p minus 1, right? And then the former, a to the power p minus 1, is from multiplying p minus 1 a's. Right, so as I said, this here is a to the power p minus one times p minus one factorial, and it is congruent to uh, p minus one factorial mod p. Yeah, so that's to say we can write this. Okay, cool. Now notice that p does not divide p minus one factorial because none of the numbers in p minus one factorial uh, are p, and so p cannot divide any of them and they're all less than p. That's another important reason for why p doesn't divide them. None of them are p, none of these guys in here are p, and none of them are bigger than p, and therefore p does not divide any of them, right? Okay, and because of that, uh, we can cancel. We could not cancel if p divided p minus one factorial, but because p does not divide p minus one factorial, we can cancel here, this here and that there and get what we desired which is Fermat's little theorem yeah cool i hope you enjoyed this keep watching take care